Cool. Here with Gabe Goodwin from ESPN. Thanks so much for being here at the Westchester Digital Summit. Really appreciate it. Um, we got a phenomenal response from the panel discussion. I cool. think kind of mixing up such high level executives from so many interesting brands is always going to create something really compelling. But I'd love to hear from you. I mean, it's the, the fun thing about doing this is you get to talk a little bit about the specifics of the things you work on. It's we show up at work and know that there's a storyline that we're going to help drive and we're going to, you know, in some ways, I think, help start the conversation and in other ways sort of see where it went and jump into it. Oh, cool. Um, you know, uh, we have certainly, I think the word that everyone here uses is scale. I would yeah. just call it a big audience. <laughs> um, a lot of people who, who expect to get good information and, and good points of view and cool content from us. Right. We're just sort of trying to attach our, our brand to any big sports event, whether it's on our air or anyone yeah. else's. Um, you know, we're we're a news organization, right? So sure. it doesn't matter if the game is on CBS. That's what sports fans are talking about. So we as Sports Center, are going to be in the conversation. We're going to so create fun. original content around <laughs> it. Yeah, we want people to engage with us and think about us for where to go after the game. But we're, we're not trying to take anything away from anyone else. We just want to be part of that conversation. How much of that comes from, from I mean, literally, you just running around and and. and feeding off of the people on like a game day shoot or, you know, eyes and ears open or a guy like, you know, Colin Coward coming to you and being like, listen, somebody just tweeted this, let's pivot and go in this yeah. direction. I mean, is it happening that fast for you guys at this point? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, some guys are more connected to their phones and to social sure, than sure, others. Yeah. Um, you know, Colin specifically is the kind of guy like most most Colin ideas start in Colin's head, and you're just there to help him. You know, help him sort of navigate. It's brilliant, it. though. I mean, it's yeah, fun it's, to what those ideas are. You know, you listen to him on the radio, and you're just like, you, like you get drawn in. And yeah, the guy's the one of the best there that is. is. Unbelievable, yeah. Um, so with Colin, it's like you know, hey, let's let's make sure we're we're setting Colin up the right way, and yeah. if the audience response to it should maybe change the next segment, we'll feed him that. But for other people, they're they're totally locked into their phones. You know, a sure. lot of our talent are really, really listening to what's going on and watching conversation on Twitter to see what their angle might be the next day. And uh, and I think that's that's changed in my time. I've been there almost 10 years. That was not the way that most people prepped for the following day's show. Sure. And yeah. now even our opinionists are really, really shaping their opinion based obviously on fact, obviously on experience, but also a little bit on where the fans seem to be with a topic. topic. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, from the really serious stuff, and we've had a few of those stories lately, to just like the goofy thing, you know, that Justin Bieber showed up at a game, yeah. and he was shown in a cutaway, and yeah. people are making jokes and memes online. Is that is that something we're gonna jump in on? Is right, that something right, that right. we can play with? That it's, it's every part of it. How much more for uh, the future of what you guys are doing will, I mean, is this even part of your agenda, or are you just kinda like, see what happens will it be driven by the fans live within the experience i mean are you guys going to be on air you know reading tweets and I, and I know that that happens but it's still curated content but maybe even like pivoting on the story based on a citizen journalist you know that's just yeah. you know tweeting a photo i think there's certainly a bit of that and yeah. we're learning we're learning that there's value in it and there's more tools to help you with that sure I tend to think in most cases, the news and the action will come from the people I think our fans care most about, which are the athletes and the sure. newsmakers yeah, on the yeah. field and court. Um, but absolutely, you know, in aggregate form, the audience can tell you a lot. And yeah. if you have the right tools, um, we use a company called Mass Relevance a lot um, yeah. to help us curate and, and pull off the fire hose Jesse of Twitter. Redness is gonna be speaking later. Yeah, from cool. Mass Relevance, yeah. So yeah, we use Mass Relevance constantly. Um, they have new tools that help you look at re what they call real-time marketing. Um, and it's a great content tool as well. So we're using that to say, hey, wait a second, our hunches weren't exactly in sync with what the audience is telling us here. Mm. It's just a data point. Right. It doesn't make it, a guy who's been producing SportsCenter for 10 years who knows how to pick the stories is not gonna suddenly go and tear up the rundown, but maybe he'll give an extra minute or two or a secondary treatment to a story that was popping on social that he didn't see that's when the so night started. cool. Yeah, Very and that's, cool. that's the way it's working for us now. So it's not that the fan is necessarily like, Submitting something is that UGC is not going to suddenly just change the show, right? But we can learn that wow, actually, this storyline, which didn't seem important to the game, really resonated even more than this highlight. That's hugely compelling. So, and I think it's fascinating too that you're talking about you know, a seasoned producer isn't going to get swayed 
by that sort of digital sentiment. Not blindly. They, they, yeah, right. They're not just going to follow it and be like, oh, well, it's social, so let's let's do it. That there's no. got to be a well thought out process and an acumen from years of experience as a producer yeah. to get to that. Point. I mean, I, I so I produce TV shows, and I you know you you everyone does it their own way. You have data points. Sure. One of them now is social. Yeah. That's a pretty good way that the audience can tell you what they care about. Yeah. But you have to keep in mind. It's only a percentage of the audience, and right. it's a percentage of the audience that are choosing to be most vocal. Yeah, and that tells you something. You know, right. I mean, ratings and what engages on in social don't always go one to one. Sure. You know, and some people, in fact, can't stand some of the things that rate best. I was gonna say, then you don't want to alienate that other part of the audience that's just like, I don't care what some kid in Boise tweeted yep. about. You and know? you got and you got to be careful. You want your fans tweeting, and you want them to be a part of the show. You want to reward really clever, interesting content that sure. they create, but yeah, you you can't suddenly make the show. If I tuned in to watch Colin, yeah, I'm not necessarily gonna really want to get away from Colin for three guys I've never heard of. And, yeah, you and want Colin. Yeah, <laughs> you just got to make sure you keep that in mind. So there's a balance. Very very cool stuff. Well, listen, man, we could talk for hours, but yeah. I'll let you go on on that one. Really a pleasure meeting you and having you here today. Greatly appreciate it, and uh, look forward to hearing more from you and maybe you can come back next year. I would love to. Good stuff. Well, Marinick High School was represented yeah, well at the Westchester, Westchester Digital baby. Summit. Westchester, represent. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man.